So many of us are asking, what is going on with our youth? What's happening with our kids? And there are quite a, th- quite a few things that we could point to as reasons why the train may be off the rails with our future generations. If y'all have been watching my channel, you know that I believe in our future generations. I believe they're the ones that are going to make a difference, but they're the ones that are suffering right now. They're the ones that are going to be paying the price here in the very near future. And I think a lot of them are awakening to that. The way that things are portrayed on social media or, you know, whatever content provider you use, um, these things that are just so heavily being portrayed and just really we're being inundated with um, don't necessarily represent the larger majority of the generation, but they're having a huge impact on that generation and not just them, but everybody else as well. The majority of people in the generation are regular people, you know, just trying to survive in the world, just like you and me. And they have a future that they're looking at and it's not looking so great. It's looking quite bleak right now. And I feel that we're responsible for that from the octogenarians down. Every one of us has a responsibility here in the way that things have turned out. And yes, it's been handed down from generation to generation, ideologies and concepts and things that aren't necessarily true, things that have been rewritten, you know, things that truths that have been skewed and uh, perceptions that they have created um, that have been passed down from generation to generation and they have caught up with us. It's our generations that went too far in catering to the fantastical elements for our children. It was really popular when my kids were growing up to have, they started putting costumes in the stores, you know, like little princess outfits. And, um, you know, you could buy them all year round. It wasn't just for Halloween, you know, and, you know, princess outfits and all, and they had like Power Rangers and uh, different things for boys too, you know? And so they always had, you know, this real emphasis on costuming. And I can see how that's kind of played into their adult lives because they did, they still want to do a lot of that fantastical costuming. And that's cool. You know, that's fine. You know, wear, wear a costume, but, uh, it's the elements behind it that are problematic. It's really not because, you know, I'm, I'm eccentric as heck. And so, yeah, I'm down with, you know, if you want to dye your hair purple and spike it up or whatever, I think that's cool. You know, that's fine with me. But what I'm saying is it's the underlying elements that are problematic. And that's the fantastical elements of believing that you can bring fantasy into reality. And then from that point, try to make everyone else, um, adhere to your fantasy, uh, force them into playing in your game, you know, I don't think that's cool, you know, and I think that's problematic overall. And it's a problem for this particular generation because there are so many that are distanced from the fundamentals of society and what it means to keep a society running healthy and smoothly. Because what we have now is disruption and disruptors to that which we keep trying to achieve, which is this, you know, we want to see a peaceful, happy world, of course, but we can't even seem to maintain that at home. And so I feel like that's where, um, that's where it all really, that's what it all, that's what it all really comes down to. It's, in a, it's just like when I talk about making a difference in this world. And I always tell you guys that the number one way to do it is through yourself. Because that is the biggest challenge. If you can fix you, then you're going to be, you know, creating a better energy in this world around and affecting the energy around you in such an impactful way. And it's the same way with your families or your children or your interactions, your relationships. There's an importance in making those connections good, you know? And I feel like that is primary, you know, this is elementary kindergarten level. You know, we start at home 
you know, that's where it all begins is at home. And we receive our first set of challenges when we're children at home. A lot of cases, sometimes some of us receive those, you know, things in public school and what have you, but you know, fundamentally speaking, we're talking about, you know, what it is that creates you and what it is that creates the way that you respond in society or your children do or whatever. So, um, fundamentally everything starts at home and our first set of challenges are right there. And that is where we learn how to cope. This is where we develop our emotional states where we develop our coping skills, where we develop our ability to maintain and connect in relationships. And so, of course, if we can fix that at home, then we are going to have a better world. But we can't reach out and fix the problem in other people's homes, so to speak. The problem has got to be fixed from within. And each individual person, just like bad energy, is contagious good energy is as well. And so the more of us that can get to that place where we are creating that family unit, that individual energy as well, for for those of you who don't necessarily have a family unit, many of you are single and don't have a family of your own, but you may have a family from, you know, which you came and they are your important connections if you still have them. And if you don't still have those connections, then hopefully you have made new ones and started to create friends and and people in your life that are what you would call your family. And that is how this would translate for those of you who are single is how to create this, you know, family feeling. You know, we're like, like that song, we are family, you know? I've got all my brothers and my sisters with me, everybody's family. And that's we, where we need to get back to. And I feel like it's just a matter of that hundredth monkey, you know, tipping the scales in our favor of, you know, love and goodness and things that are of value in this world and to eliminate all of the disruptions that have been happening. And I think that the reason the disruptions are happening, there is a reason for this. You know, there is a reason why the disruptions are happening. And that's because there is a tension that is needed. And it seems as if this generation has been neglected and it is completely unfair. These are children that have received attention from their parents, received attention from their families, but not the right kind of attention. You know, when you know when, let me, let me give you an example. You know when you're doing something wrong, you know? You know when you're going to do something wrong. And let's say you ask your friend about it. And your friend says, yeah, go ahead and, and do something wrong there. I know it might hurt you, but I just want you to like me or love me or whatever. You know when somebody's guiding you wrong, you know? And I think children instinctively know when they can count on their parents to guide them in the right direction, when they know that their parents have their best interest at heart. I think that when parents place more emphasis on their child liking them or them somehow having feeling the need to prove to the child that they're supporting them, it's a signal to the child that they really don't. And that is what creates this feeling of, you know, see me, look at me, accept me. I'm forcing you to do something here. And that's why it becomes a disruption because they are literally begging you to say, Hey kid, I love you. And I really want to guide you in the right direction. And I'm going to give you real advice instead of allowing you to just continue down this road. And I really think that it's a failure of parents to just sit back and say, well, I'm going to let them do whatever they want to do, and I'm going to support them in whatever they want to do. You can support, I mean, don't get me wrong, I support my kids in almost everything they do. But if they're going to do something that's going to hurt them, or something that is going to dramatically alter their future, I'm probably not going to just jump right on board with whatever it is they want to do. And I definitely would not feel the need to appeal to 
the the people around for attention. And I feel like a lot of this stuff that we're dealing with is all about attention. And yeah, I'm talking about that. And I'm talking about some other stuff too. It all kind of falls into the same category. If you're scratching your head going, I wonder if she's talking about this. Yeah, I am. And, and I don't really need to be specific. I think we all know the problems that, that are out there right now and, and what's going on with that. And, and now we know the reasons are right there. It's just quite, it's just as plain as day to see that, you know, we've let down these generations by not being steadfast, by not leading by example, by not knowing ourselves. And that's really where it breaks down for the parents. And I was having a hard time articulating that just a moment ago. The parents are failing to lead by example. And they're, they're, they don't even have, they're not the leader, you know? And so the kid feels that, that there is no leadership, that they can kind of do whatever they want to do. And that is why you see the extreme disruption and, you know, kind of um, rejection of certain ideas come into play. And that lack of leadership comes from the parents' lack of understanding of themselves that gives the kid nothing to go on. As parents, we're bringing people into this world. We're not raising children. We're raising human beings, people, adults, hopefully. Hopefully functioning adults, right? And what a lot of people are facing right now is they haven't been able to raise their functioning adult. We've got kids that are staying home longer than than they um, normally would. And I know there are economic factors there as well. And, you know, that plays against this generation too. So they've got so much against them. And it's like they, their parents just went ahead and stacked the deck against them and said, hey, I'm just going to be flimsy and I'm not going to give you a foundation here, at least not emotionally. You know, they might be willing to throw some money at them or, you know, give them, you know, the attention that they want, but they're not getting what they need fundamentally. And, you know, as parents, we can't give them what they need fundamentally unless we are right within ourselves. And so it goes right back to, you know, working with your energy, understanding yourself, healing your trauma, leaving your past in the past. And for those of you who do not, have a family of your own that you've created of your own children so far in life, I would say you really need to come to know yourself before you start to even engage in a relationship in which you could have a family because, you know, that is the fundamentals of having a good connection is, is being right within your own energy before you begin to connect with another. And then of course, if you're right in your own energy, you're very likely to find somebody else that's right in their own energy because of the way that frequency resonates. And with that, you know, you can maybe have what you need to create a very stable and beautiful family for yourself in the future. But without people having any kind of like, and we're just getting so knocked off kilter. It's like, it's insane. I mean, ever since I was a little child, I could look at adults and I could just see, you know, I just see through people. I just do, you know, they put up their mask and they're like, I'm a big bad this or that, you know, and I'm like, "Mm, I'm not buying that. And I guess maybe because I'm so little and everything, people are just a little bit more um, willing to be vulnerable with me. And so I do see, you know, that that things aren't always as they appear on the surface, you know? And uh, people aren't always what they talk themselves up to be or what they try to, to project out there into your perception, you know? And um, with that, I just feel like so many of us are just, I mean, all of us really, when I say so many of us, I'll just say it, all of us are children. I always think about how we never really change inside. It's like, I've always been me. I'm, I'm me in this, in this certain way. And that has never changed. No matter what age I have been or what age I will be, I think fundamentally this, this individual, this spirit of, of me, Stephanie, will always be. And the same is for you, I'm sure. And no matter how old you get, that will never change. 
And so when it comes to our children, it's the same thing. It's you're dealing with the spirit and the essence of an individual. And there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. And if you really want to give somebody what they need for their future to be able to survive in this world, you have to look at what kind of world they're going to be living in. And you also have to have your energy in the right place, you know, being right within yourself, having that foundation so that you can provide it for your children. And then, of course, we have to talk about the future of our children. You know, we are having massive decline in birth rates. And there's all this talk saying, oh, we're overpopulated. Y'all know that's not even, I mean, I know that the people are listening here right now know that that is a bunch of propaganda and lies in order to drive other narratives, right? But we are definitely on the decline and it is, it could become quite devastating and dangerous if we don't do something to resolve it. So having children, I would say that, you know, I hope that my conversation didn't encourage you not to have children because I really want you to have children, but I just want you to be ready to have children. And for those of you who have children, you're like, wow, I still have some, I have some, you know, stuff to work out before I feel like I can be where I need to be. Get to it. Start working on it. Make those changes. Turn, turn the frequency dial, change the channel start to be what it is, embody it now and don't wait, do it now because your kids are growing so fast in a blink of an eye, they're going to be adults and they're going to be going, I'm out there. I'm ready to go into this world. Did you give me what I needed? Did you prepare me? Right. And I hope that we can all look at our children and say, Hey, I know I gave you what you needed and I feel confident that you're going to do okay and I don't have to worry every second of the day. And that's the gift of of raising your kid right is knowing that I know that they're going to make the right choices or at least they're going to have a higher potential (laughs) of making better choices if I've influenced them in the right way, right? And that should give us peace of mind and that's the gift. That's the gift. All right, guys. Well, thank you for listening. I hope that you'll hit the red subscribe button and uh, come back and watch some more videos with me. There's a bell notification there if you'd like to receive notifications when I release new videos, do all sorts of sound therapy stuff and astral projection consciousness work, and then just relevant discussions on, you know, kind of where we're headed in the future of humankind. A little bit of astrology too. All right, guys, I wish you all the very best. Take care.